Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, what's the one non-traditional phone app that you cannot live without? Let me clarify that. Non-traditional. Clarify that shit. One that's not preloaded. So like the weather app and maps and text and phone and a browser. It's like some something that's not preloaded on there. I don't have a lot of fun shit on my phone. Okay. Um, I I occasionally had games but i realized how bad it was having games on my phone because one not only would it drain the hell out of my battery when i played it but a lot of them were just shitty games sure. that just sapped my time they were bad stuff like that so honestly i use it for a lot of utility um uh, I, i'm almost ashamed to say it, but the, the weather channel app is you know i gotta check the weather like all but the again, time. I feel like weather would fall under. No, this is different. This is the Weather Channel app. It's a different app that you have to download. And the benefit of this is you get ads uh, exactly. unless you want to pay Because Apple extra. Weather at the bottom says powered by the Weather Channel. That's interesting. Yeah. That's Which, interesting. You know what's, what's even more interesting is that I would say nine out of ten times when I open both apps, they say different forecasts. That's why I stopped using the weather app on the phone because I yeah. felt like it wasn't accurate. So I, don't I started under, using I did, the weather channel. Yeah. Now what I do, which is so fucking unnecessary. Well, it, I feel like it's necessary and it shouldn't be. It's a waste of time. Is I open up the weather app, the weather channel app, and AccuWeather. And I, figure, I see like what's the average because Jesus. I feel like all three of them say something different. That gives me brings me back to my time at SMS when I'd be uh, snow season and just checking <laughs> all the snow websites to see like who's yep. getting snow, how much, where, and when. And I was just like constantly refreshing. <laughs> what's the NOAA saying about this upcoming winter storm Thor? Is this a doozy or is it a, is it a nor'easter? It's what do we got to worry Thor. about? Must be a doozy. You know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, boring stuff like that. I mean... I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of stuff I could live without. I mean, get rid of all my social media apps. I wouldn't be mad about that. Um, yeah. I mean, it's dumb, but like Gmail, <laughs> you know, sure. so I get emails <clears throat> and shit like that. Um, yeah, I don't have anything like fun and sexy on my so phone. I, for me, it's not something fun and sexy. And it's something you could, in theory, access through a browser app. So it's not necessary, but it's just so quick. It would be either Wikipedia or IMDb. I'm constantly referencing oh. those, especially when I'm watching something. Yeah, I just Google IMDb and then pull it up that way. I don't use the app. See, I have used the app so much that when I look at IMDb on my phone, I get I get angry. I'm like, the, the, the mobile browser version of that website is, in my opinion, hot garbage. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That website's not fun. Uh, I found one. Uh, most food ordering apps like Portillo's. Mm-hmm. Any place that I can use to order in advance. Okay. Fucking love it. I Mobile ordering for food yeah. in advance is the best goddamn use of technology as far as I'm concerned. I like it. Because that. I get excited for the idea of like, hey, I'm going to be there in like 20 minutes. Can you have my food ready? Right. And the restaurant's like, hey, this is great. We know you're going to be here in 20 minutes. We'll slot that in accordingly. It's like, Cool. I show up in 20 minutes. They're like, here you go. And I'm like, thanks. And then I go and I sit down and I fucking eat. It's the best fucking thing in the world. Bouncing off that, uh, the Toast app mm-hmm. up here uh, in, 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 in GR, because it's GR yeah. living, is... Uh, don't do that. Most, don't most do that. restaurants... I don't know what I hated more, the, the fact that you lowered your voice, that you just threw in GR, or that you said, you know, at the end, like you're riding it's a GR horse. Living. Ah, and then you winked too. For those oh, that are yeah. listening, he winked. That's a trifecta right there. Oof, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't. Do people Enjoy do it. that up there? To be like, that's oh, that's right. That was a bit we did. Fake. That's I was GR like, living. What are you saying? Come on, yeah. it's been a minute. It's I been, know. it's been a minute. Since I was, we've said I was that. gonna reference it last week. That is for for the uninitiated. Uh, oh, that is something that our friend that. Austin Reno uh, coined. We Doug first time Doug came and visited me up here. We met up with Austin, had some drinks and some lunch, and. And Austin was, Doug was asking about something and Austin just in his, in his Austin way was like, 
That's GR living. And he like God, almost so a Matthew McConaughey funny. voice and give us that wink. Yeah. And Doug and I about lost our shit. We're like, that's amazing. That guy is that guy is so fucking funny. Anyway, uh, but up in toast, toast. They they lay down the check and uh, and I know this is a lot of. I've seen it more here than I have in Chicago, which is why I I, I haven't it with seen here. it anywhere except when I was up with you. Really? Oh, I haven't dude, seen it anywhere. It is, Do you know why? Because not only like, can you lay down the check with toast, they've also laid off a bunch of their fucking employees. <laughs> toast has. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did a wait, huge the, layoff. Yeah. Oh, the app did. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just just well. Yeah. Sorry for doing. that. But I if from a consumer standpoint, it's wonderful because you don't have to there's been a few times I've been at a restaurant and it is I I'm like, did they run off with my card? Like it is or you've got it sitting on the edge of the table. You're sitting there for 20 minutes and you're like, well, I just want to go. I'm done. I want to give you your table back. Let me I, I want to get out of your hair. Just come swipe this or I'll walk over to you and you swipe it. And they lay this down. You can still give them your card or you whip out your phone. That Toast app, and you can just pay, tip, go, done. And I fucking love that. It expedites I did that the when I went end up of to the see meal you. process. And I loved it so much because the end of the meal process is, you know, we talk about, you know, social, irrational social or irrational fears like that social sure. anxiety of, oh, my God, we have to split the check. Or just like, hey, I'm ready to go now. Can you yep. please come back with the check? And then it's like yeah. you're waiting for them. And then they, they're like, there's the check. And I'm like almost like waiting to be like, and there you go. Take it with you. You know, I don't even need to see it because I'm going to pay it. I'm not going to contest this. I don't right? need to see it. Yeah. Because worse when they're like, get to this whenever you're ready. And then they leave. You're like, no, no. don't go yet. I'm ready now. Because right. you're like, when are you coming back? Well, that's I'm the thing done I and I want to leave now. Yeah. I think it's the I think it's funny is when they give it to you and they leave as if like, I'm going to give you time to review this. And I'm like, I've never once contested saying like, you know, um, I'd like to say, I, could I not pay for this one dish? Like, I'm just, I'm going to pay for it. So here, just bring it and say, I'm ready for your card, sir. And just, I'll give it to you and you fucking go. I know the it's other, like, it's like, hey, we don't want to rush you out of here. No, Take I totally, your time. I but also it's aspect. like, but it's also like, if you've handed me the check, odds right. are we're done. You asked, we're, hey, is there anything else point. I can get you? Can I get right. you some dessert? You guys want anything else? Any other drinks or any other refills or anything like, no, we're good. Okay, I'll bring you the check. And then they're like, yeah. Take your time. It's like, I don't think we need to do that. I think we I can need- finish this transaction. I can get out of here and you can right. get a new table. So, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other the other one that always drives social anxiety for me is when they swipe at the table and then they just turn it and they said, you're going to have asked a few questions. And it's not even like they hand it to you. They hold it and you're supposed to like, yeah. fig- like you go. put the tip in and figure out. And I'm just like, I need, look, I don't do math. I need just... I could do it relatively quick. You know, you move the decimal point over one to the left and then you double it. I get that. That's 20%. But you mm-hmm. need to give me just a little bit of time to figure this out. You know, I can't. Yeah. I can't be. I can't be having you look at me. You know, I remember uh, when we'd go out to eat. My mom used to have like a little. It was before we all had phones and shit on us. Uh, my mom had this little uh, little, <laughs> little card that was like a tip calculator. And it would oh, tell like- you by percentage, like in the amount. Like how much it should be. Like and she if would it's pull like it out. 10, if it's 15, if it's tw- like, like gives yeah. you those like, it was yeah, like and, yeah. dollar amount on the side, like how yep. much, you know, you're, you're, you're paying for whatever. And then percentage at the top. And it would tell you like how much. Oh, it was like a little matrix. Like you could mm-hmm. figure. Oh, and she wow, pulled out like she was at the world series of poker and she's like <laughs> pulling it out of her purse. It's and she's amazing. Gonna, like, she'd have her tongue. And she's looking down <laughs> and she'd be like, cool. I know what to tip now. Right. It's like. So funny because I thought I was always just like, man, I got to do the math. And Jill's like, it's pretty simple. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you want to do 10%, that's pretty easy to figure out. If yep. you want 20%, just double that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know what? You're fucking right. <laughs> you're, also, yeah, you're damn right. my mom would do exact amounts. Like, well, oh, 18% is this much. And she would do this and then she'd do the math. And I used to do that all the time because that's what I learned from watching her. And then I got to the point where I'm like, you can just round up. Right. You, yeah, you or round to- down. You right. know, like. Right. Doesn't have to be exactly eighteen percent or whatever you're doing. You could be like, "Oh, is it eighteen sixty three? Just give them nineteen. Yeah. Nineteen will work. That's what do, good. What, what are we you doing know? here? Yeah, yeah, right. Or just you know, here's twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, know, you really want to round it up and, and 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 be nice? Just do that. Yeah, make it really yeah. easy on yourself. And that was also back in a time where you often would pay cash. You know, for stuff. Oh, so it she would, was you know. she was busting out like coins and shit. Sometimes, Jesus yeah. Christ. So was, I understand back then. You're like, hey, I need to leave you a tip. I need to leave you a ten. Oh, All I man. have is a twenty. So sure, 
can I get 10 back please? And, uh, you know, whatever. So, which by the way, don't miss those days. Do you miss paying in cash? I, I don't miss paying in cash in certain, in certain instances. There are other instances where I always like to carry a little bit of cash on me because there are sometimes when I do, like if I can tip in cash, I much prefer to tip in cash because I know that servers, uh, and bartenders prefer that. Uh, Mm -hmm. so if that's what they want you to think, just because, that's that's just the if you've ever industry, listened to propaganda. the best bar podcast ever, you'll know that uh, that is a fact, sir. Yeah, it's all part of the propaganda. I know. <laughs> it's, all it's all part, part of, of the machine, machine, man. The machine, man. That's, that's what how they, they want, want you, you man. Because you know what? They're tied to the banks who want you to carry the cash. Yeah, man. You know, because if you lose that cash, they don't fucking care. They you know don't they, care. You know they can't they charge you interest on cash. No, you know? bro. That's why it's unsafe, brother. So that's you why you got to use the card. You know what they say, man? A penny saved is a government oversight. That's right, man. Yeah, That's man. right, brother. They want all that dirty money, that black, that dark money going to all the candidates, you know? No, I don't miss having that, cash at all. The only thing I hate paying about paying in cash is the fact that inevitably at the end of the day, if I do a few stops and paying cash, at the end of the day, I got a pocket full of change and I can't stand it. <laughs> I don't miss that at all I either. I cannot stand that. I'm just like, you know what? Just give me, again, you round down and give me the lower amount. You keep that change. I don't need it. I don't want it. I just want to carry yeah. bills. That's it. That used to be just like a standard though. You just have change around. It's like yeah. you have it in your car and your console. You're like, man, is there a quarter a around that here? Had a change that had a velcro or a little uh, um, snappy change purse inside of it. And yeah. I was like, this is what we did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember getting excited because I'm like, ooh, I can go to a vending machine because I have a shitload of quarters, you know? I used to in I my car covered. when we used to, before they had the iPass in my car, I had oh. the, uh, one of those, one of those uh, spring operated, uh, you kept quarters, uh, nickels, dimes. Ah, yeah. And you could, and I was, you just, always just chick, 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 chick. like, <laughs> and I would keep it right in the middle console and you could just pull up what you needed. You loaded it before you went on a road trip. And then, yeah. And then God. and you got to make sure that you hit it because if you miss, you got to put it in park and open the door and then get out. And do Everyone's like, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or if you're handing the bill to someone, make sure the wind doesn't blow that shit away. Man, it was yeah. perilous. Was do you want to, do you want to have a story that'll, uh, that'll kind of drive Jill crazy? I think I've told it on here before. Uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, like brother, driver, like like make her like pissed. She'll just be like, she'll be like God damn it. Uh, you, yeah. If you can bring this up in the near future when you see her, it'll be great. Yeah. Um, find it. I trust you. Find a creative way to do it. But we were on a road trip. My brother was with us in the car. Joe was driving. We had borrowed someone else's eye pass. And we were okay. coming up to a toll booth and it was a manually operated when like someone was there and we yeah. had it up there and Jill was like driving and she was like kind of like going. She slowed down everything like that, but she kept waiting for like, you know, the thing to go up. She and it just, didn't. she wanted, she was doing like so a she, rolling stop. Yeah. She's just kind of like yeah, rolling, yeah. rolling, yeah. rolling, rolling. And then she like, from my perspective, she kind of tapped it and the thing just went <laughs> and fell over. And the person in the booth was like, what the, the fuck are you the doing? arm fell off. Like, yeah. The whole thing just oh, went shit. and fell over. Well, he's like, what the fuck are you doing? She's like, I had an eye pass. I thought it would go up. She's like, you know what? You know what? You're fucking paying. You're paying. And it was just, it was a, a real quick fix or whatever. Yeah. And then like, and but I, from my brother's perspective, he's like, man, you really blew that thing to pieces. Like in his mind, it was like an action movie where like <laughs> splitters of wood went everywhere. But he constantly brings that up when he sees her like once a year. He's like, yeah, I remember that. He just like, yeah, don't go do that. Like uh, you, you blew through that, uh, that, that toll booth. Like, <laughs> I get it. The- <laughs> That'll be my my subtle way of bringing it up to her. We'll be talking about something completely right. You ready to go for a horseback ride? Yeah, absolutely. Remember that time you blew through a toll booth? Or I'd be like, man, good thing they don't have any toll booths there. Am I right? Because I bet right, your horse, you, know? you just ride your horse right through that thing. You know, you yeah. just knock it right down and you'd be good to go. She'll be are like, gonna, what the fuck? Are you going to do a, a, a dressage and jump your horse over it? <laughs> Yeah, so if somehow that comes up, be like, good thing they don't have that stuff to jump over because I bet you just destroy that. Am I right, Jill? Like you, you did that jump over, you just ride your horse right through it. Am I right? High five, Doug. Am I right? High five. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. That and there's an there's an old inside joke between some of our college friends where they whenever they see her, which isn't that often, they'd be like, "Hey, how's uh, how's the job at the bank?" Because <laughs> okay. while we were in <laughs> while we were in college, she interned at a bank. Yeah, and like. She moved to, we moved to Chicago, stuff like that. They just assumed that she continued working in the banking industry. So like, they just always, for a while it was a legit thing. And then they, they, now they know that she doesn't, but they're still like, so how's the bank? Like they just, 
You know what? So this is how I'll do it. I'll just be like, hey, Jill, random question. What do you think is more difficult, working in a bank or working in a toll booth? Oh, boy. And you know what? Jill's so intuitive. She'll probably fucking pick up on that, too. Yep. She'll be like, where are you going with this? <laughs> where are you? What is this? That's an odd question. What are you doing? Why? Yeah. She'll be like, mm, I don't know. What do you What do you think's going on here? From so. an, I'm just asking, Jill, from an HR perspective, which one? Just random. Like, what? Do, yeah. would you rather? Would you right. rather work in a bank or work in a toll booth? <laughs> We're going to toll booth where people don't stop and they just blow right through the fucking just knock it down. It'd be like, yeah, toll booth would suck. It'd probably be boring, you know, especially like if people were to like to hit that stuff. You got to do the repairs. I mean, are you good at repairing that kind of shit? You know, <laughs> she'd probably be like, you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. She'd be like, there's me. She's like, you did this. You like, did this. She's going to look at you. Everybody go, knows. This wasn't on the podcast, was it? No. Like, no, it's on the Internet. It's on your Wikipedia. <laughs> It's well documented. Yeah, and Justin has that app, and he uses it often. He does, and that's yeah. the thing he can't live without. Look that's how we did he... that, gang. You see, da, that's da, called da. mastery. It's called being a master of your craft. Master of your craft. Whew. Well, gang, uh, since we are masters, and you appreciate our mastery and our skill set, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, youtube.com slash podcast, do us a solid. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We'd appreciate your support. Uh, drop us a comment about the app, the non-essential app, the non-pre-programmed app on your phone that you can't live without. We'd love to hear all about it. And while you're there, uh, hit the link in the description for links to our uh, Patreon, links to our Discord, and links to our merch at redbubble.com. And do us a favor. If you like what you see here, share us around. Share us to one person. Be like, hey, it's a podcast. I'm a big fan of it. think you might like it too. Check it out. To that, we say, hey, newcomer. That got shared to you by your best friend? Welcome. We're glad you're here. We love you. Stay a while and listen. Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes! Um, cool. Well, um, this was a... It's been a wild week of news. A wild week of events. It feels it's, like it's been nonstop. Like, it feels like there's unprecedented things every single day. Mm-hmm. And nothing mm-hmm. more so than the fact that when you find out when you see something with your own two eyes and you're like, this is this is real life. This is what this is. And someone goes, actually, it's not what this is. And you're like, mm, I have eyeballs yeah. and I can perceive this. And of course, we're talking about how uh, Hello Kitty isn't a cat. Bullshit. God got. damn it. Tom Cruise. That's all I got to say is Tom Cruise. Yeah, so um, uh, there's a there's a video going around on the old social medias. Uh, Jill Cook, the director of retail business development at Sanrio, the Japanese company that made the iconic character known as Hello Kitty, appeared on the Today Show to celebrate Hello Kitty's 50th anniversary and said, Hello Kitty is not a cat. Hello Kitty is actually... A little girl. To which we all said, no. Bullshit. Not true. Bullshit, Jill Not Cook. true. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, we have eyes and we can see that Hello Kitty's a goddamn cat. She's got whiskers. Check. She's got ears. Check. And she poops in a litter box. Check. Well documented in almost every episode. They, they take likes- time out to make sure that she takes a dump in the litter box. That's right. That she be, always eats How wild fish. would that be? There's some way, we have this adorable show. And this guy's like, yeah, but uh, where, where, when are we going to put in the part where she poops in the litter box? I'm, I'm like, sorry. Uh, Trent, can I ask you real quick? This part in the script that you just wrote, um, it says that she goes to the litter box, unloads... <laughs> Uh, Those are my words. Tries to cover it, gets it everywhere, and then just continues about her day. Is that was that supposed to be in here? Listen, what you're saying that's never happened to you? Well, I'm just saying she's my a kid girl. did that just last week, and I feel like <laughs> as part of this show, we should tell kids, hey, it's okay, this happens. You just got to clean up after yourself. Every, everybody poops in a litter box. Yeah, and you know, how, how do you potty train your kid? Right. What are you going to do? Rub, I don't rub my kid's nose in it. I'm supportive. I'm like, hey, man, this happens to everyone. Dad did this just last night, you know, after a real bender, you know? <laughs> Someone else is like, Trent, that's great and all, but uh, you've been pitching litter box scenes for the past, like, eight seasons, and uh, they're always different, um, and I don't think we can just 
always work these in. They just don't seem appropriate to the theme of each show. And he's like, well, they poop, don't they? We got to prove, we got to show these kids that, you know, anatomically speaking, it's correct, you know? Yeah. I mean, what kind of message are you trying to send to these kids? You try to say, yeah. You, you know, say you know, it's unhealthy to, to defecate? Yeah. You know, Teletubbies don't poop. You don't see them. Poop. How do they poop? How do they pee? Right. You're trying to tell me that their bodies consume all waste? Bullshit. No. Nope. Bullshit. False. You see yeah. how heavy those this things bullshit. are? Bullshit. We're going to be a legitimate children's show. Legitimate children's show. Bluey, you see Bluey taking dumps? They have an indoor toilet. That's crazy. That's crazy. They're dogs. They should be pooping outside, Here. and they should be eating each other's poop to get rid of the scent so it doesn't attract other predators. This is crazy talk. Here's the next big revelation we're going to find out is that Bluey is actually not a dog. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. No, no it's actually a, a little child. Yeah. <laughs> like, Fuck what? You. Fuck you! I have eyes. I no, have that's eyes. the thing. Like, yeah, they're they're saying, yeah, she's she's uh, she's not a cat. She's five apples tall. Three. She what kind of apples are we talking here? Apples. What kind of apples are we talking? Hey, listen, I buy apples every week at the store. Yeah, and sometimes the apples are smaller than others. Sometimes they're big fat daddies. Like, what are we talking? Also, what kind of apples? I think that matters. Are they Fuji? Think, Pink ladies. Well, I think they're red delicious. I think they got delicious. Be red delicious. That's lame. That's a standard. As, as a coworker a, of mine says, I don't trust anything that claims it's delicious, and I agree with that. You, you don't know? have to eat them. They are this, but they are the standard bearer for for measurements. Yeah, she looks when more you're like measuring a Granny Smith. Apples, you know, you feel like she's a Granny Smith. She's definitely a Granny Smith. All right. I've, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and on top of that, um, you know, the cat has whiskers and paws, right? Not a cat, though. Um, yeah, apparently not. And then uh, what else is it? Um, they also said well, the biggest bombshell for me was that she has a cat. Yes, that was this, the other thing. This not cat owns a cat. Yeah, that's crazy. And if you look at it, I, I don't know. It looks very similar to Hello Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, this is wild, man. This is wild. Um, that someone would, it seems like they're trying to retcon something, you know? Yeah. Almost as if like, you know, they had, well, uh, you know, a sponsor, <laughs> like, I don't know, like Jared from Subway was doing something with this. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. We got to, we got to retcon this. Like, that's not, that's not what happened here. That's no, just, no. she's a real girl. <laughs> she, <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, is her, is her name <clears throat> supposed to be like Catherine and they call her Kitty? Cause her name's Hello Kitty. We got to like, go to the Wikipedia for this. Hello, Kitty also, Lore. See, when was that Wikipedia article uh, last edited? Because I don't trust it if it was edited like within the last week. So their full name is Kitty White. Uh, That's just lazy, but okay. Japanese is Kitty Hawaito. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boy, they have the Doug Japanese. Doug found something uh, he did not like. Oh, it just says Haro Kitty uh, under like the Japanese pronunciation. <laughs> I was just like, Ugh, I don't like it. Um, alternate names Kitty or Kitty Chan. Um, they live in London, England. Uh, they're British residents. The White family home. That seems wild to me. Species cat. Breed Japanese mm -hmm. bobtail. S Height stack of five apples. That's weight three apples. I'm saying, uh, I think Jill Cook, I, look, I don't, have we vetted, does Jill Cook actually work for Hello Kitty? I don't know, man. This is crazy. I'm, uh, I'm saying right now, I, look, anything's possible in this day and age, man. Fucking nothing makes sense anymore with the, with the current news cycle. And all I'm going to say right now is that uh, Jill Cook is, uh, that interview was completely AI. Yeah. Jill Cook doesn't exist. It says I'm character it information there. here. It says she is portrayed as a cute, bright, sweet, kind-hearted, and tomboyish girl who could do anything, but it doesn't say about it, them being human. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah, See, Hello Kitty wild, was man. initially known only as the white kitten with no name. Also, her blood type is A. <laughs> Did not. I feel wrong for knowing that. <laughs> Who decides this? <laughs> it was like blood type. A. You like, know what, what I'll say? I'll say kudos for world building. 
That's some deep <laughs> world building right there. That's that a detail deep. we needed to know. That's deep you know? world building. Have you, Doug, have you ever decided the, the blood type for any of your NPCs in your D&D campaign? I'm going to now, especially <laughs> in my Curse of Strahd. I feel like the yeah. blood type's real important. You know, it's probably, Some of yeah, them are exactly. more delicious than others. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> no, this oh, is it's just under fucking... conspiracy theories. This is under conspiracy theories. Hello Kitty is a human girl, not a cat. This was from 2014. That suggesting that Hello Kitty is a cat, one correction, Sanrio made for my script for the show. Hello Kitty is not a cat. She's a cartoon character. She's a little girl. She's a friend, but she is not a cat. She's never depicted on all fours. She walks and sits like a two-legged creature. She does have a pet cat of her own, however, and it's called Charmy Kitty. I'm like, so, listen. I'm sorry. Listen. <laughs> you go. I mean, look, Yogi Bear, are we arguing that he wasn't a bear? Right? <laughs> That dude walked and he talked to the, the fucking uh, the, the park ranger and he said, hey, yeah, right. boo boo, grab the picnic basket. And then they like ran away. He wore a fucking top hat or a, a fedora and a tie. OK, Bugs Bunny. Let's I can go all night. What, what are we doing next? Brian from Family Guy. Come on. I don't give right? a shit. Walking on two legs. Bipedal does not equal not an animal. Yeah, that's so funny. Specifically, Hello Kitty is not a real cat in the way that her, her pet Charmy Kitty is actually such, as Hello Kitty is always portrayed as walking on twos rather than fours, and is not specifically referred to in official <laughs> Hello Kitty media as a cat. It's like, yeah, but you drew her like a cat. But like her name was what was the unofficial name? Or the 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 original uh, official name? It says it at the top. I just oh, closed the thing. Oh yeah, it's Kitty. Her real name's Kitty. <laughs> Initially Charlene's. referred to as the white kitten with no name. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Oh, this is this is interesting. Uh, however, many interpreted the statement that Hello Kitty was not a cat in a literal sense, resulting in the idea that Hello Kitty is actually a human girl with her cat-like features being simply an aesthetic design choice. What Supporting if she, this name, Kitty... <laughs> what if she's a little girl that... What if she was... Okay, she was the little girl <clears throat> and she was out one day and she was real hungry and innocently she stole a piece of candy, but she stole it from a shop that was run by a witch and that witch put a curse on her. And so she's been living her, she and her entire family has been living at, like as an anthropomorphized cat, but she is a little girl in there. It's like the Stephen King story thinner, but with cat called cat. I'm so glad you said that because that was the, <laughs> that was the reference point in my head. Even though it had nothing to do with stealing candy. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, the controversy surrounding the idea of Hello Kitty actually being a human became widespread to the point that Preston Fro of Rocket News 24 called Sanrio's Japanese PR department to ask about the matter. The PR representative's response was blunt. We never said she was a human. This was in 2014. 10 years ago. So this has been this has been simmering for 10 years, Doug. The representative clarified that Hello Kitty was a uh, Gijinka, anthropomorphic cat, and basically just like Mickey Mouse, saying that Disney's mascot character is not mistaken for a human, but isn't quite a mouse either. False. 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 That's false. Yes. Is, is he scurrying around, eating cheese, and like ruining people's lives? Kind of. But like... <laughs> You know, Goofy's a dog, right? But he doesn't act like a dog. Right. You know, Donald Duck kind of acts like a duck as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I don't know, man. This is such a weird hill to die on as a company. You'd be like, I, it's a girl, right. but it's not a human. And it's not a cat. It's like, okay. All right. Well, again, can I just, I want to go back to the fact that did anyone, did Jill Cook get sign off from anyone to make this statement? I feel like the PR department is contradicting what Jill Cook uh, is saying, and again, I'm not convinced Jill Cook is not an AI. Yeah, I'm I just love how there. like the, the the clip of this when uh, Good Morning America is talking to him is like she's actually not a cat; she's a little girl. And they just go, "Oh," <laughs> and they just like moved on. Like, right? Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. What? I mean, what are we looking at here? Like, what? I don't. She's also fifty. <laughs> I just, I'm like, I don't know what else to tell you. This is a, uh, this, t t I, it just seems like they're splitting hairs here. They're like, it's not technically a cat because it walks on two legs and it, uh, it talks and it's, I'm like, okay, it's a fucking cat. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, not a cat uh, cat, but it's a cat. All right. Yeah. Jesus. 
Anyway, this wrecked so, people's buttholes on social media. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. Look, I never, I was, I'm not the demographic for that, but there's been a lot of. Look, I think it said uh, Hello Kitty did in 2013 did like eight billion dollars in sales. Yeah, uh, something like that. So you know, obviously, yeah, she did about eight billion dollars in retail in 2013. So look. There's definitely a fan base for this. There's a consumer market for this. A uh, lot of people took to TikTok to say uh, they feel like they've been gaslit and nothing is real anymore. And I don't blame them. This is not the, I'll say this. This was not yeah. the week for this to come out. Okay. There's enough going on. We don't need this. No. We don't need this Jill Cook. <laughs> come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> come on, guys. I would love, I would love what other property or brand would you love to have like some wild conspiracy theory about this like i oh i always God. loved coming up with them when i watched natalie's dumbass shows like pj masks yeah where there are barely any adults <laughs> in that show and i'm like oh so all these kids are dead and they're in purgatory like that was like my thing i'm like these yeah i would love it if nike if nike actually said no this is not a swoosh we're a fishing company that's a fishing company <laughs> I don't know That's why all you all you runners and basketball players and everyone else have have just like co opted this brand, but we are a hardcore fishing band brand. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be so good. <clears throat> uh, just like you, random. Ma- I'm trying to think of like another like. Of course, I go to kids shows because that's always fun. I mean, that's what's on to in the house. Like, what's for the you? darker yeah. side of this? Yeah. Oh yeah. What's now he started oh, watching yeah. Power Rangers. And it's such a bad show. Not like the original stuff, which is also bad, but it's like new Power Rangers. I'm like, yeah. I want to start instituting bans on what shows like, can be allowed in this house because the this new is ones, just so the terrible. The new ones have no purpose being bad. The old ones, we're, we're coming from the 90s, you know, like, sure, whatever. It is what it is. The new ones, you you, you need to do better. It's awful. It's just yeah. awful. So, uh, but yeah, I'm just trying to imagine like something like, no, we're all looking at th- – th- th- honestly, this, this is actually fits in perfectly with the news because it's like – I see what's happening. They're like, no, you don't. I'm like, no, no I no, literally, it's, it's live. Fake news. I see what's yeah. happening. They're like, Mm-mm, nope, that's not happening. It's like, what are you talking about? See it. Like, this is a cat. No, it's not. It's no, not it's a cat. Not. It's a little girl. It's like, you ever seen a cat walk on two legs? You're like, I, on, I'm, man. Going to, I'm, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight <laughs> you. I'm going to challenge you to Mortal Kombat. And we're going to go, we're going to go <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2 because that's the one I'm good at. And we're going to, just going to keep going until <laughs> you, uh, you give up. But, what do you all think? Is Hello Kitty a cat or is it just a girl? I don't know. You tell us in the comments. Jesus. And if you and if you think she's a girl, you're wrong. So there's just it's that simple. Yeah. She's a girl cat. Those exist, but this is a cat. It's wild. It's wild that this has been going on since twenty fourteen. And they're like, Oh no, technically it's not. It's like every once in a while it just rears its ugly head again and uh, sparks yeah. a, a little bit of a fire on the internet. Yeah. We can't even have nice things. We can't even have fun, fun kids things. Speaking of fun kids things, uh, <clears throat> let's talk about a robot getting a face of living skin that allows it to smile. Look, I'm telling you this right now. I keep, I opened the link that you had so I could have a reference point for the story. I can't yeah. keep this tab open, Doug, because it's so unsettling to me. I want to, I want to share. I this. cannot keep this. It's like it, every time I click over to it, it is so unsettling. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this uh, for the YouTube crowd I so they can don't see like it. how awful Ugh. this GIF is and how brutal it is. Oh, everything about it from the shininess just... to the eyes. Why does it have eyes? And then there's that little teeny like nose in the middle. Like I said, it looks like a Kinda, cuttlefish. Yeah. It looks like someone cut the yeah. fucking face off a cuttlefish. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty awful. It's pretty terrifying. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing now because or I no, not a cuttlefish. What's the one I'm thinking of? Blobfish. Is it a blobfish? Yeah, a dickfish. Yep, fish. that's the one. Yep. Yep. Looks like someone cut the nose off a fucking blobfish. It's gross. Yeah. It's terrifying. Uh, so I don't know. Um, <sighs> this is unnecessary. In case you're wondering, the description of this is an image released by University of Tokyo researchers uh, shows a robot smiling with the help of mechanical actuators beneath a flexible layer of living skin. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. So. Um, so uh, the approach here is that these folks are trying to make robots more lifelike. Um, and the future researchers say similar techniques could also be used on humans in the cosmetics and plastic surgery industries. Great. Their findings were published and yada, yada, yada. So it's uh, so upsetting because 
on one on one hand, um, this is living skin, mm-hmm. which is cool that they were able to create this, and it's also self healing, which is also super cool because obviously, if you have robots going around with skin that's just like decaying. And they're like, hello, how may I help you? And it's just like <laughs> flaps of skin are just like Love me, falling me, off their me, faces. Me, me. Yeah. It's like looking at an animatronic at like Disney World or something that's not working right. And you're like, oh, my God. You know, the Hall like, of Presidents and Lincoln's like face is just melting. It's off like he's side. missing his lips. So right. he's just like, ah, first gone seven years ago. And you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> it's terrifying. Um, so I, you know, it, it's pretty cool. Um, that that's existing biological skin, you know, I think is a really neat thing. I just don't understand what, how many robots do you encounter on a daily basis, Justin? You know, I mean, none that I can think of, none none robots. And maybe that's our fault as an American society. Maybe we need more robots. I was going to say, am I, am I doing it wrong? Am I doing life wrong? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, how that operates, but the idea that they're like, guys, this, these things are really freaking people out. We got to make it better. We need to put some fucking skin on these robots. <laughs> I, I guess. Hey, University got- of Tokyo, we got a challenge for you. We got these robots. We fucking hate looking at them. They're driving us crazy. They're real creepy. Can you fix it? And they're like, give us 10 years. Let's see what we can come up with. They're like, can great. You make we this can wait more uncanny Valley for me. They're like, does this robot have eyes? It's like, no. It's like, we got you covered. Does now. And they show it to him. They're like, this is great and all, but this this robot, it just doesn't seem friendly or welcoming. And they're like, watch this. They flip a switch and then mm, it starts smiling. They're like, perfect. Perfect. I don't think this robot wants to kill me at all. How come we don't write an episode about where it takes a shit? I mean, because I mean, this just doesn't seem human to me unless it takes a shit. They're like, get out of here, sir. Is that a cat? Can you make a cat that can smile and take shit in litter box? Right. <laughs> Trent, it's not a cat. All right. <laughs> Bullshit. Back to the room, Trent. Um, I, I, I just, I, I don't, I think from a plastic surgery standpoint, super cool, right? If someone just has some sort of yeah. issue with their skin and they need to have something applied to it. I think that's great. But when they're like, can we just wait like 30 years? And then just try this then when this is so improved that yeah. we don't have to look at this and be horrified like we're in a horror movie where, you know, this kind of looks like something you'd see out of a Chucky movie or something like out of a oh, puppet. Oh, it very much does. Yeah. The unblinking eyes, you know, staring at you, just being like, like the, the face fell off and now it's coming to kill you. Yeah. It's absolutely horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. I, I don't know. I just can't imagine... I just don't understand is, what. The, why do we need to make uh, robots look more? Because again, to your point, like if we don't have to do skin grab, like pull it off of someone somewhere else on your body and move it, like if if you could just have, without having to all you know take from borrow from your own body elsewhere, if you could just graft like a, a living skin on, if you had like an injury or an accident or something, amazing. But I don't know why we have to make robots look more real. Who's demanding this? I don't think anyone. No, like I I can't conceptualize I always go back to the only reason to make it look more realistic is because you want to fuck it that's what I was going to say man this that's robot it. with smiling someone's going to be like just make it can you make the mouth hole can you open up the mouth with it I, I just why else would you want it to look more lifelike I don't you don't need a you do not need a robot to look more lifelike hard stop I don't I don't I, I mean again I'm not privy to all the robotics enhancements and things that are going on in the world. And maybe some people, if it, you know, I've seen some of the Boston Dynamics robots that just, you know, don't necessarily have human heads or whatever, you know. Well, I was going to say, I don't can know you, what you call them, but. Can you imagine one of those that does like the flippy woos and does like the parkour <laughs> with that thing just like glued on its front? Like just, just smiling as it does big, it. Mm-hmm. The big triangular body and then that thing just glued on and you're like, what is this nightmare? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't understand the application of this, other than like, I mean, again, if we were like an iRobot or one of those movies where these things were everywhere and people were like, Meh, yeah, I wish it was more human looking. I'd still be like, fuck you. Like, can we just make a digital face? You know, well, like this guy's, this guy goes biometric robots could also become even more realistic with thicker skin. Adding a future projects could look to add <clears throat> sensors, pores, and even sweat glands and fat. Why? Why do our robots need to sweat? 
If that anything, that's totally disrespectful to the that's disrespectful to the robots. Totally unnecessary. You know, we're gonna we're, we want you. We're gonna make you in our image. We've become gods. We're gonna impose all of our flaws upon you. <laughs> so you're gonna sweat now. Why would? What's the purpose of this? I, I don't, don't understand. It just feels like we're point of it. Stepping little by little, we're stepping forward to a point where they become indistinguishable and then they take over. And I don't like it. The team's paper says their work could also bring insights into how humans' wrinkles are formed. Who fucking cares? Why? Do you like, oh, let's make a wrinkled skin one. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Is it, or is it to like, if they can figure out how wrinkles are formed, they can do better with those de-aging or de-wrinkling lotions? That or they're like, we got to make it look like an old person. (laughs) You know? Yeah. We want our robots. That's the thing is like, this article's like shows everything that they can do. It's like, but why are you doing this? Like, I don't. You were so I don't concerned get if you could, you never stopped to think you should. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. Again, it's, you know, it'd be like, <laughs> it's one thing if we're like, we're driving around all these cars, but man, we just don't have any wheels. I wish we had <laughs> wheels for these cars. You know, we're, you know, we're flintstoning it, just, you know, running with our feet and, and pulling our carts down the road. I just... I feel like it's missing something. I'm like, how about wheels? It's like, <laughs> someone's just like, do you want a face? How about a face want, on it? <laughs> let's put a face on, like, on what? On a robot. What robot? Right. What robot are we doing this for? Is this for an animatronic at Disney? Okay, that's cool. But what, in general, are like, don't worry, guys. We've solved this problem. We've made self-healing skin. Okay. <laughs> we've, Here's we've what put- it looks like. Ah, why are you doing that? They're like, robots? We've put... <laughs> faces on all the robots that work in the auto industry. Okay. And they're all frowning. We can't figure yeah. out why. None yeah, of them they are They all happy. look like Thomas the Tank Engine's face. You know, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get it. And get, but why are you doing it? Well, it can smile. I'm right. like, okay, I'm glad you didn't make one that frowns because that's depressing. Because <laughs> so that's what I feel smile, for it. But all it's doing is grimacing at me. I don't like it. <laughs> They're like, don't, oh, that's the actuators. We need to replace those. We need to get you some fresh actuators so it can smile for right. you. It's like, sorry, we misprogrammed it. We put snarl, not smile. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know, man. Like, a part of this is cool. Like I said, the applications of self healing skin, I think, are really cool and it can really benefit people in that regard. But I don't understand why we're trying to strap living skin. Develop self-healing skin. Yeah, man. Just don't put don't put it don't make it a face on a robot. I don't. That's an unnecessary step in this process. Couldn't agree more. I think it's weird. I think it's dumb, and uh, I don't want to do it. I think it's weird. I think it's dumb. I think I need a palate cleanser. Yeah. Well, there's one good way. Oh, okay. I got you. Don't worry, buddy. I got you. There's your palate cleanser. Do you want to cleanse your palate? With I should. You know what? You're right. I missed out. I'm not thinking. I'm that's not what doing. The ro- See, I feel like that's the sound oh. that, that smiling robot is making. As it yeah. smiles, you're like, Ugh. it's like, you know what? I take it back. I think we should do this. I think we should build these. <laughs> yeah. I think this makes sense. And again, give it to me. You know what? Give it to me, baby. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, Justin. Douglas. How are you feeling about movies? Are you feeling it? I'm feeling, feeling it. I'm feeling like I'm ready to to keep the streak alive. All right, you did great last week. You did really well. I had, look, it was a team effort last week. Yeah, Potion Seller had some great guess, guesses, you know, and they they helped you and they pulled mm-hmm. you through it. And and you, I think, put them on your back, put them on your shoulders. You're like, follow me, fellas, to victory. You know, to victory. Because we ride to Valhalla. Know, she's got a great ass. She's got and a your great head's ass. all the way up in it. <laughs> and you got your head all the way up it. All you know? the way up it. Uh, so good, so fun. So we're doing it again where I am playing sound clips or sound effects from movies. And Justin's job is to figure out what movie they're from. What I inadvertently have done is I try to find popular movies, but I find the lesser known lines that have stuck with me personally that I'm like, that's right. I know what that is. And then I throw because it at Justin. It's all about see if he can figure it out. It is all about me. This game is really all about me and my... <laughs> Machinations, as they say. Uh, Justin, all of these are going to be lines yes. uh, from films. They're not sound effects. So okay. um, be prepared. Are you ready to get started? Yes, this is better for me. Let's do this. Okay, here we go. If you ever disrespect my wife again, I will end you. I will fucking end you. Got that, Chief? That is, it could not be easier. 
That is Robin Williams speaking to Matt Damon in Good Will Hunting, one of my absolute all-time favorite movies. Fucking love that movie. And Very I just good. watched it like three days ago. <laughs> I just rewatched it too. Did you? So, oh, perfect. Yeah. 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 It's a great movie. God, man. I love it. As I was watching it, I'm like, I was like, oh, I gotta pull that clip. That's a great yes. clip. You know? That is one of the best. That's such a good scene, too. Yeah. Because it's, so it's just good. like, whoa, he just fucking turned, dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's I'm like, I'll let you talk a lot of shit about a lot of things, but don't you dare right. talk shit about my wife who died of cancer, you piece of shit. How much you bet? So 225, good. you? He's like, uh, you look at those books up there. Those are some dumb books. <laughs> You read all I love it because like I, I love it because Matt Damon's character is is so just like disparaging and such a dick to everyone because he just tries to, you know, push him and everything yeah. like that. He's like, I like to work out. He's like, oh, yeah, you like to work out. He's like, yeah, you too. Yeah. Yeah. He's like Nautilus. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, free weights. He goes, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, how much you bench? Like 225. How much you bench? He's like, huh, what's that over there? <laughs> I feel inadequate. Let's change to something that I am better at. Right. You know? right, right. So I can put you in your place. I love it. So good. <laughs> Great job. Great start. Was that, Are you that's ready for your next one? You got, me, you got me starting off in a feel good. It feel strong. All right. Here we go. Next one. Unite us. Unite the clans. It's short. Okay. Do it. Do yeah. it. I, was, I was expecting more. Do it yeah. one more time. I know. I've heard that most of my life. Here we go. Unite us. Unite the clans. Braveheart. It is Braveheart. Nice. How'd you get like, it? That's Mel Gibson. Yep. I know it was Mel Gibson, but I'm like, that's a weird. I was like, it's not his normal. Sp- I, I, I was, it was the accent was the thing that got me at first. I'm like, but where? Mm-hmm. And then it's clans. I'm like, well, that's the only, that's not him on a Saturday night. So that's gotta right. be Braveheart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And there's a little hint of the score in there from those strings and stuff yep. like that, which is a very memorable sound to me. That line. Not the clans. Is- is so funny. Well, it's great. It's a great line altogether yeah. where he's just asking uh, 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 <clears throat> the Bruce uh, to basically unite Scotland together and, and whatever. He's like, you. He's like, do it. But that was also one of the cheat codes in Warcraft 2. There's like different cheat codes you yeah. can type in and each one would do something different. If you typed in unite the clans, you would automatically win the level. No shit. So that was like one of their Easter eggs. Okay, like cool. they would label this stuff. So uh, Unite the Clans always stuck with me. I was yeah. like, oh, awesome. Cool. That was, Unite that the was good. So. Yeah, it was, a sh- it was a short one, but you got to yeah. pay attention. You can, there's a little thing. Yeah, yeah, much more than that. You'd be like, well, there's obviously a Scottish guy. Okay, right. cool. Got it. You know, yeah. so you did excellent, excellent ear on that one. All right. You ready for the next one? Yes, sir. All right. He's going. You are neither cold nor hot. So because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Ooh, this one's tough. Oh, man. Because it started, right when it started, I heard De Niro, but I don't think it's De Niro. <laughs> St- I, mean, I know it's not De Niro, but like right when it started, it was like, is that, is it, it gives me a... You are neither cold nor hot. So because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. You are neither cold nor hot. Because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's such a, again, it's such a unique, like, accent. It's, like, somewhere in between, like, mm-hmm. a mob, New York-y. Oh, it's almost You're on like, the right track. It's almost You're like Colin right Farrell, like, his penguin character. Like, it's. Mm-hmm. I don't, but I don't think he says that in the Batman. You are neither cold nor hot. So because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Fuck. I feel like when you tell me I'm going to I'm going to kick myself, but I'm really struggling to to pinpoint this one. Uh this movie came out Boy, if only I had the IMDb app available. <laughs> Wouldn't matter cuz that's on my phone. Uh it came out in 2002. 2002. Came out in 2002. Neither cold nor hot. It's not Spawn, is it? <laughs> it's not Spawn. <laughs> Sorry. Look, I'm going to take a wild like, swing here. Boy, I haven't seen that movie in a long time, and I don't want to watch it. I don't know if they came out in so 2002, bad. but I was like, that's the, uh, anyway. I feel like it came out around that time. It was late yeah. 90s, I think, for that one. Okay. That one was so fucking depressing. Um, came out in 2002. Okay. 2002. Do you want another hint? Yeah, please. Directed by Martin Scorsese. His eyes are oh. going from side to side. Uh, no, was that too early for that? 
It's not Gangs of New York, is it? It is Gangs of New York. Is it? Okay. All right. That's that weird accent Daniel Day-Lewis fucking copped. Yep. Weird so accent. You, yeah. You were so on it, though, because you're like, this sounds like something from New York. And I was like, yeah. you're on the right track. You know, he was, that's Bill the Butcher. Yep. After he found out that uh, William Tweed basically backed the Irish sheriff uh, for, um, yeah, for, for sheriff. Okay. Like, uh, and uh, Bill the Butcher murdered that guy and sent the the bloody club over to him during like a whole political thing he was having. And he was like, what the fuck? And he goes to talk to him. And he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I know this was you because you're neither hot nor cold. Therefore, I will spew you out of my out of my mouth. And he's like, if you come around the five points again, I'm going to fucking kill you. I, it's such a I lo- it's a great movie. Great movie. Great movie. That's one I have not seen in, in a, a decent amount of time, though. That's a movie I watch pretty much on the regular. Like, it, it pops it, in. Yeah. Like, it's one of those movies, like, if it's on, I'm like, I'll watch it kind of thing. So, like, I, if as I'm I looking would, for something to watch on my thing, I'm like, yeah, I'll watch Gangs of New York. I'd venture to say it's been over five years, five to maybe ten since I've seen that. So, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a minute for sure. I realize how much I rewatch movies. Yeah. I watch I rewatch them a lot. I like finding some <clears throat> stuff that I've watched before and then just rewatching it. Well, it's, it's like it's comfort food. A treat. It's you, you know, it's you, a treat you're for revisiting me. Some, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always yeah. pick up something a little bit different each time I watch it. All right, we're gonna do one more All since right, you blew through so many of these. <clears throat> so since you go. blew that last one. No, I'm no, you blew through so many of these. I'm like, we got a little more time, so let's do this one. You ready? Yeah. Listen. You smell something? There's a lot in there. Oh, Short fuck. clip, but there's a lot in there. Yeah. Fucking piano cue. I, I, <laughs> it's huge. Oh, I know. I know it. God damn it. <laughs> as soon as that piano cue hit, I'm like, fuck, I know this one. Oh, no. <laughs> but my brain's doing the thing where now that now that I got in my head about gangs in New York, I'm shutting down. Like, yeah. all right, give it to me again. Listen. You smell something? Listen. Listen, you smell something. <laughs> That's such a good... I didn't know. <laughs> it makes me want I could, to say It makes no sense, and it's yeah. perfect for what this is. I didn't know about this line until a band that I like, For Your Strong, uh-huh. wrote a song in, entitled Listen, Do You Smell Something? And I looked up that song, and then it was a clip to this scene in this movie. Oh. And I was like, wait, this was a line from that movie. Cause this band tends to do stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Well, title yeah. stuff from, from all sorts of stuff. Fuck so I was like, well, that's definitely one I'm going to have to pull oh for, my God. for this. I love so that. I love it. I love it. Yeah. What a weird line. Uh, does it make mm-hmm. sense in the context of the film? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it fits the character really well. Okay. Is <laughs> it's it a character? Give me a genre. Like, is it is there humor? Is this like a dark comedy at all? Or it is. It is a comedy. It is a comedy. Is it a full fledged comedy? You know, let me see. Let me see what how they what the internet says. I'm already saying uh, I'm I'm going to struggle on this one. Even though, again, this one 100. percent I feel like it is. It is a comedy. Yes. Okay. Listen. You smell something. Listen. You smell something. Oh wait! You fuck! It- is it Ghostbusters? It is Ghostbusters! Oh my god, that's accurate. Wow. Yes! Yes, holy shit. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Now, like, once you once you find the thing, it's like, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh yes. Oh my god, yes. Because I, okay. I was going to say, I'm like, can you tell what actor it is? Yes. Because once you figure that out, you're like, wait, I think I got this. I mean, that so. was, that's, like, once you hear it, that is undeniably accurate. Yeah. And that, that, that piano, right? Yeah. Doo-doo. It's what, so what's, funny. What's the scene though? I'm still blanking on the scene. It's the beginning of the movie when they go to the library to okay. investigate, and there's like a whole stack of books, and they're like, "Yeah, definitely supernatural stuff." And Bill Murray's like, "Yeah, no human could stack books like this." And then Dan Aykroyd turns and goes, "Listen, do you smell something?" <laughs> it's, such a, it's such of that time that weird left, like out of left field humor that they used to do. It's so it's good. such a throwaway line too. Like I it never. Is. I never, like I said, never recalled it until oh, Four Year Strong wrote that song. I looked it up. I'm like, this is from Ghostbusters? I don't remember this at all. <laughs> Phenomenal. I love it. Well done, man. You did Ooh. a really good job. That was excellent. Those, and I, those were good ones, man. I feel yeah. uh, those were good. It's like another it. reason why I like rewatching shit right now is I'm like, is there anything pull I could possibly shit, yeah. pull from this? Yeah. So, 
Yeah. What, what's going to get me is when you start pulling second lines from movies we've already done, because that, now that I'm going to have to really start second guessing. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I haven't said that I'll never go back to those movies again. And that's so, fair. Like, it's maybe, just, yeah. There may be other lines where I'm like, eh, I mean, I don't know. I might pull that one again. That's so a good one, yeah. excellent job. Excellent job. Uh, Justin. Yes, sir. What would you like to recommend this week? Uh, I'm going to recommend a couple weeks ago, I went and saw the bike riders in theaters. And oh, uh, that got Tom Hardy in it? got Tom Hardy, Austin Butler, uh, the Norman guy who Reedus, played Michael fucking, Shannon. Fucking Elvis. Elvis. Uh, Austin Butler is awesome, dude. Jody Comer. Um, yeah, man. It's uh, <clears throat> Here's the thing. I'll say this. It's not... I walked out of there. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, it's not without its its flaws. It's not a perfect movie, but it's a really fucking fun movie. What movie is perfect, Justin? That's Let what me I'm ask saying, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Goodwill Hunting. Um, but outside good, of that, um, it, it follows a very similar, what I will say is it follows a very similar, uh, the Bronx Tale, Goodfellas. Like, there's a lot of story, uh, a lot of beats, um, that mirror that kind of, of, of story. So if you, if you like those kinds of movies uh, that, that have that, that feeling and, and that kind of uh, trajectory, I think you'll, you'll dig this. Um, also these actors just did a phenomenal job based off of a true story of a gang that was around in the sixties in uh, Chicago. And uh, yeah, I just, I think it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So I would, uh, I'd recommend, I think, I could be wrong, but I think it's out now streaming. So, uh, or at least oh. available for rent. So, uh, I, I would, like Jodie Comer a lot. Out. She's really yeah. good. I told really? Hag, I he didn't he didn't hear it, but I told Hag I thought that Jodie Comer followed his wife Chris around for a month because I felt like I was watching a young Chris Breitman. It was oh. bizarre, bizarre. You yeah, wouldn't have that reference point. Very few people nope. who listen to this will have that reference point. But if you know who I'm talking about, you fucking know what I'm talking about. I like uh, she was really good in uh, The Last Duel. She plays phenomenal, does a phenomenal job. And she's that also was, in Free uh, Guy. So. Damon and. Uh, Damon. Yeah. Damon Affleck and uh, Adam Driver. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, directed by uh, Ridley Scott. Ridley? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent movie. One of my favorites. Super dark, but super good. Uh, Dougie, cool. what do you got? Yeah. Um, you know, I almost suggested we stop doing recommendations just because I feel almost like there's pressure for me to find something every week. And I've been just been re-watching and, you know, old stuff <laughs> <coughs> and whatnot. Um, but uh, I actually am going <laughs> to, no bullshit, I'm going to recommend uh, the new album, the new EP from Potion Seller. I just, all last Friday... I basically just played that EP on repeat nice. while I did work and I fucking loved it. It's called When They Get Old and it's an excellent EP. It's so well produced. It's well written. Um, I really like it. It's just solid. And this is going to sound really shitty, but a lot of indie bands don't have albums or things that sound this good. Right. Like they just don't. And so sometimes that to me, audio quality, it takes it away from me where I listen to it. I'm like, fuck, this just doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. um, there's a great, uh, Four Year Strong did a really great cover of a Blink-182 song, but it was so poorly recorded and mixed. It sounds like dog shit. Yeah. And I hate it because I'm like, this is a really good cover, but it sounds terrible. I can't listen to this. Yeah. So oftentimes when I listen to some indie bands, you know, it's no fault of their own. They're doing the best that they can, you know, to, to produce whatever they're doing. Like this sounds legit all around. And I don't know, man, I, I just, yeah, I'm biased. I think Austin's great. I like what he does. I like what he's, what he's done here, but so good. It's a really good EP when they get old, wherever you can find your music, Spotify, Apple music, all that good stuff, go check them out, show them some love. Um, if you're in the grand rapids area, they got a show coming up in September at the skull tones, skeletons, excuse me. Skeletons. Um, yeah. Skeletors. Um, uh, <laughs> it's they're They're great. They're good dudes. They got great music and, uh, I'm just really rooting for them. I hope they hope they start doing really well. Cause it's good stuff, man. It's really I was good just stuff. trying to find the, uh, without opening Spotify, I was trying to sign, there it is. Okay. I wanted you to say it. my, the, the two songs that, uh, 
I liked the most off of here was uh, one more photo and Natty Ice. I don't know if that's what it's called uh, on the because I know they said they changed some names, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> one more photo and Natty Ice. I thought those were too solid. So, uh, those one more my- photo is also one of mine and Love Island. Those two are. My I know favorites. you liked Love Islands from the from the jump. Yeah, yeah, that one was really good. And uh, and Monarchs Club is great. That's a great song about basically getting in a fight at a bar. <clears throat> And uh, he has some great lines. He's like, wouldn't my mom be proud to basically know that I got in a fight <laughs> at a bar? And, you know, he just did such a good job describing like how basically they, they told me to be quiet, but I couldn't help but be a smart ass and yeah. start talking shit. And I don't know. It's good. It's good stuff. So help them out. Uh, show them some love. Uh, that's when they get old, wherever you find your fucking cool ass music. <laughs> Justin, we did it again, man. I'm proud Dude. of us. Oh. It just gets better and better every fucking week. Just every episode, we're getting better and better. Uh, gang, thank you so much for listening and watching. Please check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Podcast. Hit the like, subscribe button, share us around. We'd appreciate it. Link in the description for links to our Discord, to Patreon, to our merch. Uh, we appreciate all that sort of stuff. You can follow us on our social medias at MindGapPodcast. Uh, we appreciate all that love and be sure to follow Justin online as well. On Instagram at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, again, wherever you consume audio versions of podcasts, well, you can find us there as well. Like, subscribe, share, rate, review, all the things. But like Doug said earlier, please share. Just share us with one person. Let them know that we exist. It helps more than we can express. And so thank you in advance. And then TuiStaith.com, TuiStaith and all social media, LoveAndImprovFilm.com, LoveAndImprovFilm on Instagram. Hoorah! All right, with that, I'll say, uh, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Bye.